this is Sarah. This is the new radiation instrument that we're building here at the Surrey Space Centre. Um, we've got a long history of building instrumentation that can fly to monitor the radiation in the atmosphere. Um, so we've had instruments back on Concorde, uh, and that's one of the last data sets that recorded, recorded a big solar flare whilst in flight. Um, but this kit's designed to go on balloons. So the Met Office will fit it to their standard meteorological balloons, the same the ones that go up and measure the pressure and, and the wind speed and things like that. And then it monitors the radiation environment up there by monitoring the particles that pass through it. And then it turns the number of the different particles that have been counted. It then turns that into a dose rate that we can use uh, for radiation protection purposes, much like you would in a hospital when you're going to have an X-ray, for example. When we talk about space weather, we're talking about changing conditions in space, which is influenced by activity on the sun. So we'll look at things like solar flares, solar radiation storms, and coronal mass ejections, which can then impact on the Earth's magnetic field and upper atmosphere, and in extreme events, can, that those impacts can also infiltrate down onto the Earth's surface. And space weather has been around as long as the sun and the Earth have been around. But the reason why we're noticing it more now, or we are sort of taking more notice of it, is because it impacts particularly on our technology and infrastructure. So as we've had this sort of technological explosion within the last 20 years, the things that we become more and more reliant on day to day are more and more impacted by space weather. We haven't had a big event for 20 years. Um, the last big ones were sort of pre-modern technology in terms of the really small microelectronics. Um, so we're trying to get the world ready for one of these events so it doesn't take all of our critical infrastructure offline. We want to make sure that when aircraft are flying through one of these events, they are sufficiently safe to operate. They have the systems in place to cope with any potential problems that may occur, um, because what happens is it causes errors in the memory of the systems. So if you can, you know, bit flip, so zero goes to a one, one goes to zero, it causes problems. And we need to make sure that the aircraft systems are able to cope with that and continue to operate safely without putting anyone in danger. Um, obviously, radiation also comes with the, the biological risk as well. Um, so the earlier warning system we can, we can tell the aircraft to delay flights or potentially make some route changes if it's possible, um, just so we can mitigate the, the impacts to passengers and crew on board. And now we believe we've got the first set of data that, dis that has radiation measurements in a solar storm all the way from ground to 100,000 feet in the atmosphere and back down again, which has never been done before. We're still um, analysing the collated data, but we do we do have it, and it's looking it's you know early indications though that it's promising, and no one's ever done something like this before. So it's going to be really invaluable for verifying our models, so that we know that we're understanding the radiation environment as best we can.
Make informed decisions with comprehensive analysis on the go. Strengthen your portfolio with real-time market updates on the go. Create effective strategies with insightful expert opinions on the go. Grow on the go with CNBC TV18. Now streaming live 24-7 on YouTube. Hey, thank you for watching this on CNBC TV 18. Hope you liked it. For more such interesting news and updates, follow CNBC TV 18 on all the social media platforms.